While promoting his new memoir, Beautiful Things, President Biden's son Hunter sat down for a few interviews. When pressed about that infamous laptop by CBS Sunday Morning's Tracy Smith, here's what he had to say. Was that your laptop? For real, I don't know. I know, but, but you know that's... This I is really a, don't know if okay. the answer is. That's you don't know, truthfully. yes or no, if the laptop was yours. I don't have any yours. idea. I have no idea. So could have been yours. Of course, certainly. It, 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 there could be a laptop out there that was stolen from me. There could be that I was hacked. It could be that there was the... That it was Russian intelligence. It could be that it was stolen from me. All right. Back with us to discuss that our Democratic strategist Colin Rojero and culture editor for The Federalist, Emily Jashinsky. Emily, let me start with you. I think this is a media thing more than anything. That Hunter can get away with this for so long and then still repeat this Russian intelligence absolute oh nonsense. Not one shred of evidence from the ODNI. If it was, you know they would have said it at this point by the Biden administration. And he gets, this is the first question the guy's even faced on this, you know, in months. And I'm not saying this is the most important story in the world, but the fact that he can just completely get away with it is just egregious to me on this point. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, there's two layers to this. The first is the layer of like the substance of what we know about the laptop is that there were a lot of emails on it that implicate his father, who is now the president of the United States in a grand influence peddling scheme. And I say that not to sound like Alex Jones, but there is a there there when it comes to this. And there are serious questions that need to be asked about the president of the United States and influence peddling. And of course, what we know right now is that Hunter Biden is far more implicated in this than his father. But it is possible that something was going back to Joe Biden, that money was going back to Joe Biden. And we don't know about it, but there is evidence on the laptop. The second layer of this is the disgusting failure of our media in this country that not only didn't cover this story, but when they they actively actually tried to suppress it, working in concert with the technology industry in Silicon Valley, it's outrageous. And Hunter Biden is then able to have this like shameless book tour where it will benefit him because he will look sympathetic and the media may ask him some tough questions and he'll be really stupid to answer them in ways like he just Mm -hmm. did. But at the same time, the bigger picture, he'll get away with it. Yeah, no, that's true. Colin, I think, look, personally, I'm glad Donald Trump is out of the White House and I prefer Joe Biden to be there. But I actually think the way that the media and the tech companies handled this whole thing of trying to trying to censor it, we're not going to cut, we're not even going to look at it, when, look, it's up to the American people to decide whether this is a significant story or not. My own personal judgment is it wasn't all that significant, the things that were on this laptop. It wasn't all that particularly revelatory, but that was for people to decide on their own merits. Instead, the reaction actually called so much more attention to this story and has kept it going and given it life way beyond what it ultimately deserved. I mean, I think that in a way has been a a tremendous disservice even to Democrats because it has just turned this whole thing into much bigger than it ever would have been otherwise. Yeah, I I agree with that. And, uh, you know, the the old saying that the cover up is often worse than the crime really does apply here. And they should have Mm -hmm. just gotten it out in the open, dealt with it and then been, you know, moved on with things. It now looks collusory in all the ways that you you described. I'm just a, a little worried that, uh, you know, we're still talking about Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. Granted, I think there are questions that could have been, should have been, and may in the future be asked, but nobody's going to hinge their vote on on Hunter Biden. You know, Hunter Biden is obviously someone who's had a lot of challenges to deal with in his life um, and, and, you know, is overcoming them, has overcome them, and is working through them. The fact that we're still talking about him as if he's actually really newsworthy just means we ain't got that much to talk about because government's a little bit boring again, and thank (laughs) God for that. You know, you know, and it, I, is it going to hurt the Democrats, really? You know, Hunter Biden having a laptop and answering questions in a funny way? I doubt it. I mean, you know, there's checks in people's banks and vaccines in arms. And I think that's what people are going to be really concerned about as we move into the midterms and any additional legislation going forward, like the infrastructure package or immigration reform, that are going to be big things that hopefully are very monumental and fundamentally alter the future course of this country. I actually completely agree with you, Colin. And the reason we're covering it is from more from a media perspective, because at the time, I remember that morning when it broke and I looked at Chris and I was like, "Ah, it's not that big. Like we were, it was early enough. We could have actually changed our programming or whatever and covered it. We had to cover it after Twitter, you know, took made sure that you can't access the story. And then it became this huge brouhaha. And like I even said this at the time, I don't think anybody's voting on Hunter Biden. They're voting on a stimulus check and they're voting on health care or, you know, something even more important to their life. But that's the problem, right, Emily, which is that the cover up 
of this, actually expose something more about our elite class. And I do think it is egregious that Joe Biden could get away with basically just lying about, like, I have no idea about the laptop saying it was Russian or whatever, when actually the most sympathetic thing he said was when he was on the debate stage. And he said, look, my son's been through a lot of problems and I'm proud of him. And you know what? I think anybody who knows somebody with substance abuse sympathized deeply with that. And that actually did make the story go away. You don't have to rely on these like Russian lies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But again, like this is the, the there's a very good reason to talk about this story. And it does have more to do with the cover up than the crime. A hundred percent. No question about it. But this is a larger problem with our politics is that the media is such a bad actor in all of this. Like, remember, when we talk about the media, the media, this is people's this is the public's primary access point to our politics. This is their primary window into public policy and what's happening in business in Washington. This is the primary window into it. And the media has completely warped their view of what is happening. And that is a huge problem. And so we now have to have all of these conversations about this, what should be a secondary layer, right? Like there should be always a secondary layer. That's it's right. like, wow, the media is failing here, here. But it now has to become the first layer because nobody knows what the hell is going on in any story because the media so badly warps the public's perception of what it actually is. And that has become a bigger story unto itself. And it distracts us from a lot of more important issues or what should be more important issues. Yeah. The other I'm thing, Colin, that's funny to me is just like, you know, Democrats have developed this tick. Anytime anything comes out they don't like, it's like, it's Russian. It's Russian disinformation. It's Russian intelligence. Could, sure, <laughs> could, maybe it's my laptop. Yeah. It's obviously your laptop. <laughs> there is no evidence that Russians had anything to do with this. Maybe they were happy to seize on the story once it was out. Sure, that's fine. But there's like a disease in the Democratic brain now where if you ever say anything they don't like, you're a Russian asset, you're a useful idiot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And people buy this crap. Yeah, I, I don't know. All that Russian Russian asset intelligence talk, I think, you know, we need to close the book on that and move on. It didn't work Indeed. very clearly. Yeah. No, yeah. Nobody bought the line. I think it would work better as the next Mission Impossible script than the next script for a Democratic ad, right, or talking <laughs> points for the Democratic caucus. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the idea that there's Russian intelligence, and I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, and they're not, uh, you know, involved in doing nefarious things that we should be concerned about. We should. But the idea that they're stealing Hunter Biden's laptop to then send over to or not, uh, you know, Fox News is just silly and, and we should move on from that. Yeah, I, you've always been very clear eyed on this, Colin, and I've always respected that. OK, guys, really appreciate you joining us. Great to Thank see you both, guys. See you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on Rising, Zed Jelani joins us now to discuss the status of security at the Capitol after this release attack. That's when Rising continues.